Joy. What an absolute thrill to get to spend but a moment in the company of two people who I greatly love and admire. Earlier today, Sigourney, you spoke at James Cameron's hand and footprint ceremony at the Chinese theatre. Now, you've known James Cameron for, for almost 40 years. Yes. How did it go? Was it, it must have been a wonderful celebration. It was a very exciting celebration because Jim and our producer, John Lando, both had to uh, be honoured together. Mm. And I guess at a certain point in a, an illustrious career, you get to take your you know, your socks off and you get to put your bare feet in cement. And that's how you know you're at the top of your you're game. Right. It is weird. It is very odd to celebrate someone's career by doing something quite so degrading <laughs> in yeah. front of people. And because you you have to stay there for a long time. It, it, it's not it's just true. like, it's not like, like, oh, thanks, guys. It's, you have to sort of, you're yeah. like... I know. Yes, you do. You have to make an We're impression. We're all having a great time. I know. It is an awkward position for a long time. Uh, yeah. There were two guys from New Jersey who put my feet in cement. <laughs> and then they put me in a car. <laughs> yeah. And they drove me to a bridge. Yeah. That's I thought, this is ritual. quite an honor. And you yeah. were like, guys, <laughs> look, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's a, it's a team sport. Yeah. It's not just me, guys. <laughs> now, Brian, it's good to see you looking quite so dapper and clean-shaven uh, to yeah. see this glorious face. Because anyone who's seen photos of Brian recently or the, or the posters for Your Honour, this is what Brian's been looking like <laughs> recently. Now, when... <laughs> when did you get rid of this bad boy? Did your... How did you... Did your family... Did Robin like the beard? Oh, Robin did not like the beard at all. Uh, I was, I was, you know, an inch away from being a, a, a displaced person. Yes. Shall we say. <laughs> And I would. Fluff I think you're up being very beard. generous with an inch. I think you are. <laughs> I think you're pretty much I there. Pretty much there. <laughs> I uh, I would play with her and and frizz up my hair even more and take off all my clothes and say, Oh, you're pretty. You're... <laughs> <laughs> She'd run. <laughs> out of the door. I mean, we're speaking of bold hair choices for a role. Sigourney, you, you shaved your hair for Alien mm. 3, which was really iconic, iconic. Just even looking at this image brings me back to the first time I saw that film. Whose idea was it to, to shave the character's head? And did you have any qualms about doing this? Well, actually, I, I met David Fincher, uh, right. who directed yes. it for the first time at a meeting at Fox. And the meeting ended, and as we were leaving, I said to him, so, David, how do you see Ripley? this time and he said I don't know how do you feel about bald and I said okay <laughs> it was that easy wow. I actually thought it was kind of a great idea yeah you do get a bit chilly actually. don't you you do it's get quite amazing. chilly but and of course uh, you've experienced with the whole oh, that's right with, with the, with breaking with the bald, bed yeah. yeah and I would shave my head too and I felt the same thing it it felt like you had an ice pack on your head Right, and so you would have to really cover up. You you don't realize how much heat is escaped yeah. through the skull. <laughs> tell us, Brian. I never thought I'd say this. Can you? Yes. Can actually, you tell us a bit more about it's, it? It's it's clearly about to be one of your greatest <laughs> anecdotes. <laughs> it is. It's a, around thirty-four <laughs> percent. Now. Something which isn't losing heat, but is glorious. I want to talk to you, Brian. This is very exciting. These bronze statues of you oh. and Aaron Paul oh, yeah. uh, are standing in New Mexico, where you used to shoot Breaking Bad. Yeah. I think these are very good. I think yeah. these are brilliant. What did, you, what did you think of this? Who tells you about such a thing? Well, they, they came to us and said they, they wanted to, to erect two bronze statues of us, of our characters, in the convention center uh, in Albuquerque, and I thought, well, that's better than being outside because then the, the pigeons could deposit their critiques. <laughs> yes. And uh, so we thought uh, this is a great idea, but then, then you're worried about, God, what's it going to look like? You know, it, if they don't capture you, it's forever wrong in yes. your mind. <laughs> well, you know, you are a culprit of, of something that I thought of when they were doing this. When you start, when you, you fool we, When we prank Beckham, David Beckham. David yes. Beckham. You fool David Beckham, uh, honoring him with a statue 
And there he was. I don't know. Have we got You've a picture of it? This, Have we right? got a picture of when we pranked David Beckham? Look at that. <laughs> okay. We, we... <laughs> David, of course, is one of the most handsome men in the world. Yes. And there he is waiting to see, and they unveil it. <laughs> and he's looking at it like... <laughs> and he's trying to be a gentleman and not say anything. <laughs> My God. It was but so we funny. actually based that on... Do you remember the real one of Cristiano Ronaldo, <laughs> the, the football player? Like, have we... Have you, is that, look, that's... <laughs> That's a real statue yeah. of Cristiano Ronaldo that they actually unveiled in front of him. Yeah. That's where the idea came from. It was not attempting to be a caricature. That no. was yeah. the real thing. Well, I think this is brilliant. I think this is great. And for people visiting conventions in New Mexico, <laughs> I think to walk in and see two meth dealers... <laughs> yeah. Two, you can yeah. walk past and go and someone say, Mummy, <laughs> Daddy, who's, who's that that they're celebrating? You say, well, they, they sold meth. <laughs> but they were really good at it. Yeah. And that's, that's, and we thought, that's who we should celebrate. Yes, right. Come on, let's get into let's... this dental convention. And I think that is yes, right. a wonderful thing. <laughs> Now, we're talking about classics. Your classic comedy, Working Girl, do, do you know about this? It's being remade and produced by Selena Gomez. Yeah. What do you think when you hear this news? Where do you think your character would be today? Well, I think it's great. I think she's going to do a phenomenal job. Mm. And I, I actually was asked where my character, Catherine Parker, would be today. And I said, I thought she would be in cryptocurrency. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I don't no, absolutely that right. And her company would be called Bitchcoin. <laughs> Why has no one done that? That must have been idea, I yeah. float it out into yeah. the universe, and whoever wants to start that Remember company. Remember the copyright, Bitchcoin? <laughs> <laughs> that is that's a genuinely, genuinely good business. Yeah. Yeah. Bitcoin. <laughs> we might be a little late to get into crypto now. I feel like yeah. we've seen the other side of it, but <laughs> no, maybe it's, it's starting thing. again. It's the big thing. It's yeah. the big thing. I got a friend of mine, Sam, in the Bahamas. I'll call him. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, Sigourney, you are you are showing no signs of of slowing down in any way. You're so busy. You had four movies out in the last year. Have you? When was the last time you took a real break? Do you enjoy taking a break at all? I, I I'm very good at taking breaks. And I'm looking forward to taking one starting next week. <gasps> oh, that's yes. what you want. What are you going to do? What does a break look like for Sigourney Weaver? Well, I don't have any. Actually, I did take a break earlier this year. Oh. I, uh, it was my husband and my 38th anniversary, and we went to... Congratulations. A miracle in this business. But we went with a group of gardeners to Rome to visit Roman and Renaissance gardens. I know that sounds very... <laughs> You know, we didn't know geeky. anything about them. It sounds very <laughs> geeky, very geeky gardening. And, you know, just to get away, frankly, from the business, from promotion, and be in a foreign country as beautiful as Italy, and just seeing beautiful things and eating wonderful food, it was mm. a fantastic vacation. And I'd love to do that again. Is it necessary to travel with the gardeners? <laughs> Is it not yes. something that the two of you could have just done alone? Is it... But I think the other gardeners, you see, helped me appreciate the gardens. My husband is, is this not a, a gardener. euphemism? <laughs> it can be, it can if be. you want it to be. <laughs> well, I hope... That you hadn't can... occurred to the gardeners, no. but I will I... suggest it next time we yeah. go on a trip. I played a gardener. Can I go next time? Yeah. <laughs> yes, why not? Oh, what I'm... kind of gardener did you play? Oh, a good one. Yes. <laughs> Planting, Just you know, course. the whole... Okay, I must look for that. He is. <laughs> it's actually. <laughs> very good. Um, I'm, actually... I'm very, I'm very pleased. Mind. I'm very pleased you did that because I do think, I do think it's the thing that isn't said enough about you, which is, you are arguably your greatest talent is as a, is as a mime. Yeah. You are, you are. Exceptional at it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, open a bottle of wine for us. Just give us... Oh, God. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Hang on, stop. Just give people a chance to wake up anyone who's asleep, because they're going to want to... We... Ah! 
<laughs> now, Brian, let's talk about genuinely this. I love this show so much. Your show, Your Honor, is back for a second season. It yeah. is such a hit and a smash. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what's happening this season. <laughs> well, uh, the, the well, uh, briefly in the first season, my character uh, compromised his principles as a judge. He he became a criminal basically because he thought it would save the life of his son. He would do anything mm. to protect the life of his child, and that's what drew me into it. Unfortunately, everything that he did and all the compromises of his principles and and integrity was lost because his his son died in the end. So. Er so if that ever happened, God forbid, what would life be like? What, is there life after such tragedy? So I pitched Showtime with a second season of being able to really dive into grief and despair and, and depression. It's so funny. <laughs> it's just yeah, it's, uh, so many laughs. Uh, it sounds very maudlin, but it actually isn't. It's very hopeful and uplifting. And so we're giving the audience a little, a, a complete opposite of what we had in the first season. Well, I am very incredibly excited. excited to watch it. Let's take a look at a clip from Your Honor. The second season premiere will be available to stream and on demand on Showtime tomorrow. Hey, oh, oh, oh. business? What? Where are you going? I'm just going to see the mayor. He's expecting you? I, no, he's, he's, he's my best friend. Your name? Desiato. Michael Desiato. You've been banned from this building. Look, I... Turn it around. Let's go. You're holding up my line. Stick around more with these two when we come back.